The penultimate day of our LV game of the week saw the champions Yorkshire close in on a second win this summer. First on the third morning, they finished off the Hampshire first innings, which had resumed on 223 for eight. Lewis McManus went before a run had been added. And then Adol Rashid, like Jack Brooks, bagged his fourth wicket of the innings to remove James Tomlinson as the visitors to Headingley replied to Yorkshire's 370 with a total of 227 to trail on first innings by 143 runs. With so much time left and such a handy advantage, Yorkshire were now in control. Adam Lyde, though, was in a rush to add plenty more as he made 23 of a 35-run opening stand with Alex Lees before Yorkshire slipped a little, losing three wickets for the addition of 45 runs. Not such a bad thing, though, when you are comfortably ahead. Fidel Edwards was both expenses and at times dangerous. He'd already hit Lyde on the helmet and he then removed the same batsman in what was the left-hander's final innings before the next England squad is announced later in the week. Lyde is expected to be in it. Lees, after an excellent start to this summer, is just going through a sticky patch at the moment. He heard the death rattle when beaten by Gareth Berg and was on his way for 16 on this occasion. Edward struck for a second time after lunch to remove Andrew Gale, who top-edged a pull to be held by Tomlinson, who was not given anything like the workload he had to deal with in the first innings of this match. Gale was out for 12 at 80 for 3. Hampshire may have believed that, with those wickets, they were back in this game, but Cheteshwar Pajara and Johnny Bairstow soon put pay to that concept. The Indian was not phased by the loss of his captain and responded by going after Edwards, hitting him for three consecutive fours after Bairstow had got off the mark with a single first ball. In a sense, it was an over which had summed up this match. Hampshire had had their moments to stay in touch, but then lost the momentum. Not that Pajara was using nothing but the meat of his bat at this stage. Bairstow, meanwhile, simply picked up where he left off in the first innings, which brought him a run of all 100. He's turned himself into a very classy stroke maker. And while Andrew Strauss faced the media at Lords on this morning, Bairstow once again reminded one and all of his talents. It was, of course, announced by Strauss that Yorkshire coach Jason Gillespie would be amongst those being considered to take on the same role with the England team after the sacking of Peter Moores at the weekend. That might help Bairstow's cause. Pajara, a late replacement for Eunice Khan when he had international commitments, has made a slow start to his time with his new county, but Class will out and his seventh four to go with his 1-6 took him to a 50 off 72 balls. One thing is for certain, Yorkshire are not going to struggle for foreign talent this summer. The afternoon session belonged wholeheartedly to the home side, who struck 148 runs in the 36 overs within it. Bairstow was raising his bat again as he struck Liam Dawson into the distance to get to a 50 off 73 balls, six fours included as well as that maximum. The keeper has returned to his county and has had quite a match. He and Pajara had added 130 for the fourth wicket when Bairstow was out shortly before T, after adding 59 to his first innings, 102. The lead was now at 353. That wasn't enough yet for Gale, and so there was time for Pajara to ease to his 100, his second in the county game, and the 29th in total in the first-class game for the talented 27-year-old, who has the same number of test caps behind him. This knock emphasised his skills, the 100 being made with very few concerns off 163 balls after three hours at the crease. The joy of his achievements was there for all to see. There was time left for some hitting out. Jack Leaning went after Dawson, the young batsman scoring at a rate normally left to the one-day arena. Pajara continued to ooze class at the other end and had a declaration not come, he may have fancied batting for some while yet. Yorkshire had started the day on top, of course, but they were to finish it with the thoughts of an almost certain victory and one of the reasons for that was Pajara, who'd made 133 when Gale called them in with a total on 305 for four, leaning racing to 43 of just 32 balls. So the target for Hampshire was 449 and there were a minimum of 117 overs left in this game to try to make those runs. But in the second of them, Sean Terry failed for the second time in the match as Brooks again started well with a wicket with his second ball. 
His sixth success of this match followed straight away. Michael Carberry nicking off to his first delivery to give Yorkshire the perfect start. Brooks, of course, knew the importance of that wicket in particular. It became 11 for three when James Vince failed again. This time last summer he was scoring runs for fun, but now he became the latest to find Brooks simply too good. Live through the catch in the slips. Yorkshire had to wait for 12 overs for their next success, but it came when Rashid won an LBW to get shot of Dawson. And so Hampshire were left staring down the barrel as the penultimate dare this match drew to a close. Will Smith and Tomlinson, the night watchman, did survive the final three overs, but a home win now looks inevitable. Hampshire will resume on the last morning on 37 for four, still 412 runs away from what is surely now an impossible target for them.